Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Video Vault. This week, we take a look back in time at the sustaining activity that is going on right now as we speak. It's the season for subsistence salmon fishing. Fish camps are going on all across Alaska. They're in full swing from the actual fishing to the traditional preservation to feed the communities throughout the winter. In this story from 2015, Kaslin Hatch takes us to Dillingham to show us how the history of those rich traditions are being passed on to the next generation by showing them the ways of their ancestors. My grandma has always used birch, and so I've always used birch. It's tradition that's been passed down for generations. It's just a real honor to um, have her teach us how to do fish the way that she's been doing fish for all the years that she has been. For Julene Hoseth and her family, and everybody has a job. Learning subsistence living is what helps them connect with their rich culture of growing up in Dillingham, Alaska. We're a big family. There's eight of us kids, and um, all of us have had the opportunity to learn from our grand. And like any commitment, preparing fish can be a full-time job. If it's raining, you're going to want to smoke your fish constantly. You'll pretty much be married to your smokehouse. <laughs> because of the commitment to tradition, even the tools used to cut fish haven't changed much. Galish will split with the Nulu, and Alberta will split with the Nulu. And everybody has their own Ulu. <laughs> the women still use those knives today. Yeah, they're a little more modern. Yelmir Olson's mind is still full of stories of his days as a fisherman living in Dillingham. In fact, as the elder tells his stories, some visiting the Samuel Fox Museum in town on this day listen in. And we take that cover and we cover us. <laughs> Smelly Sam, we didn't care. We were so tired. <laughs> Slept for an hour or two, go fishing again. But it's the town's strong history of fishing that helps the community thrive today. Now the largest city in the Bristol Bay region, Dillingham wasn't always the largest settlement. In 1818, across the river from town, the community now known as Nushagak was the center of trade when Russians built a fur trading post. That's the point of contact with the outside world. They came here to exploit the fur trade. Originally inhabited by the Yupik people, local native groups and natives from all over the state, plus outside traders mixed together as they came to visit or live at the post. In 1884, the first salmon cannery in the Bristol Bay region was constructed. Ten more sprung up within the next 20 years. But by the turn of the century, the dawn of the Nushagak's day was rapidly setting. Nushagak, once the hustle and bustle of the Bay Area, received a fatal strike. When the channel of the Nushagak River began to shift, so did the people, and that's when the town of Dillingham began to grow. Over, you know, 100 years, the river has meandered back over this way. All of that is accreted, filled in, and in fact, you can see it. If you stand at the harbor and look out, you can see the mud flats are extensive all the way around that point. And so the channel, you know, moves as the river meanders. In addition to the growing mud flats that limited access to fishing vessels, the worldwide influenza pandemic of 1918 devastated the region and contributed to the depopulation of Nushagak. And that influenza wiped them all out. And the doctors at that time told him, you bury the people as fast as you find them dead. After the epidemic that left no more than 500 survivors around the region, a hospital and orphanage were established in Kanakanak, across the river from Nushagak and near the present-day city of Dillingham. That's when Dillingham became the fishing town that thrives today. We've always been um, about fishing here just over time. We uh, went from being as primarily a subsistence site to really a commercial uh, fishery now with subsistence. Today, one of the only canneries left in Dillingham is Peter Pan Seafoods, and it remains one of America's best known names in wild Alaska seafood products. The fishing industry is critical for our economy. Um, this, the Peter Pan cannery, the oldest facility in, in this district, um, 
still operates today, and it's over 100 years old. And in fact, it's, a, it's kind of our, uh, one of our historic areas. It's the longtime tradition that kept lifelong residents like Halmir Olson from leaving Dillingham. Well, it's my hometown. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed growing up here. I mean, we had fishing and a little trapping and yeah, we had, uh, looking back, I think it was a good life. And much like the words painted on a mural in town, for the Haseth family, it's the history of their culture that gives them strength to continue family traditions. Ours isn't as good as grandma's fish, but <laughs> neither is our homemade bread. She makes the best homemade bread, too. With photojournalist Albert Luton reporting in Dillingham, Caslin Hatch, Channel 2 News. And we are hoping it will be a successful subsistence fishing season for those who depend on it throughout the winter and also for the commercial fishermen, those who feed the masses. Thanks so much for joining us for this video vault. Don't forget you can look at all the episodes on our streaming devices, our platforms right there, along with alaskasnewsource.com. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you next time around.